Okay, so clearly this is the ball and ring lab, and these are the ball and the ring. They're made out of brass metal, and they have wooden handles so that your hands don't get burned. We're going to light the Bunsen burner. So obviously you're going to use the Bunsen burner for your heating method. We're going to use an ice bath, which right now is registering at approximately 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Could be a little bit colder, but that'll probably be cold enough. And that's going to be our method for cooling. This is going to be our method for heating. So what we'll do, we all be able to light this or not. That'll look good on camera. So obviously this is a cooler flame. So in your observations, you're going to want to make sure you've identified what kind of flame you're using. Um, we will start off with a double cone blue, which is the hottest flame. At the start of our lab, um, you can see that the ball does fit through the ring. It fits through just barely, but it does. So what we're going to take a look at is thermal expansion and the idea that heating the ball might actually cause it to become bigger and therefore causing it to not fit through the ring. So the first thing we're going to do is heat the ball. We'll adjust the flame to a double cone blue. Um, so, we're going to heat the ball in a double cone blue, make some observations. Some students have noted that the ball actually starts to change colors a little bit, becomes a little bit more glossy in appearance. Um, one of your variables would definitely be the method in which you heat the ball or the ring. Um, I tell students to rotate it through the flame so that there's consistent heating throughout, kind of like you're roasting a marshmallow. Oops, forgot to start my stopwatch. So I'll assume 30 seconds have gone by. You can tell this is a very technical experiment here. So after one minute, we'll go ahead and test the apparatus and then record our observations for that. Some students make the mistake of writing down that they see the ball expanding but that's not really an observation that the average human could make. The only way you would really know that the ball is expanding is if you test it, which we're going to do right now. So after approximately a minute, we'll go ahead and test to see if the ball has expanded. Okay, it still fits through, so maybe a little bit tighter, but not much. So this time we'll add some time to it. Same heat different experiment will go for two minutes this time. seconds. Most students probably took about three minutes, two to three minutes before they actually saw a big enough difference that would cause the ball not to fit through the ring. So one of your very first observations should be what the ball and ring did at room temperature. So it's approximately 70 degrees in here. Um, that would be one of your first observations. Another observation or piece of data could be the temperature of the ice bath, which we said was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't measure the temperature of the flame, but we do identify what kind of flame we decided to use. In this case, the hottest flame that we have, the double cone blue. Yay, science! All right, we're heading for 30 seconds. Hopefully this will be a big enough change. If it's not, then we may end up trying to change the variable and try to use the ice bath for the, the ring. Okay, we're going to let it go to 
two minutes and 30 seconds just to be safe. Oops. <laughs> Don't write that down as an observation. That was a mistake. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this made a big enough difference. And it did. Ball does not fit through the ring. <laughs>